So off the top of your head, like what would you each pick as like your your top three, like most salient identities? Melissa, you go first. Uh, Black woman. I don't know what the third one would be. Southern. Would you say that? Um, I mean, I was born in the South and I lived in the South a lot, but I moved around. Would you say American, maybe? Yeah, American. Huh. Yeah, okay. Black woman, American. <laughs> Gabby? <sighs> wow. Okay. Jewish, hugely. Uh, and and um, more religious than Allison. Rel- relig- f- I do the holidays and um, I speak Hebrew and I have like the cultural identity of having grown up very Jewish. So Jewish is is a big one. And also in light of a lot of the anti-Semitism that's become more prevalent since 2016, I've actually identified as Jewish way, way, way more and felt it more importantly than than um, in the past. So the Judaism has been upped. Um, and then <laughs> what a tailspin I'm in right now about identifying as a woman. Uh, but so that doesn't need to be one of your most salient identities. I don't I don't really identify with it. Is that That's bad? Fine. Um, I understand that the world sees me that way, but I don't, it's not like something that I'm like, I don't, I'm not like, it doesn't feel like a huge part of me. That's why it's fun to do this exercise, right? Because it's like, how do I view myself? Yeah. Uh, I mean, queer. Okay. Queer is a huge, yeah. Queer is definitely a huge part of it. Um, and then I don't know. Floridian, just because I think I, I, you know, I've moved from New York City to Los Angeles. And I think like, there's a lot of conversation about coastal elites and like, you know, the, the, I don't know, I, especially like, with the election and, you know, all these Southern states turning blue and the effort to turn all of these states blue and how disappointed I was when Florida went red. Um, I don't know. What are some other examples? It could potentially even be like um, your socioeconomic status. So like if you like strongly identify as middle class, maybe that sure. could be one of your salient aspects. Um, sure. I, I mean, culture is like so all encompassing. So it is like it is like kind of like very unique to each individual person. Mm hmm. Do you guys ever feel like obviously for you, Gabby, like you probably feel like when you're in queer spaces, that is like maybe the your strongest identity when you're there yeah I think so yeah well specifically I'll I'll, I would go with bisexual like if I'm Mm -hmm. in a a specifically queer space then I'm like the b of lgbtq um more and more I go with queer but uh yeah I, I do strongly sort of vocalize and identify with and and become in that space like a representative of the b yeah Melissa, do you feel like you ever like switch back and forth between what's like most prominent in your identity? Uh, yeah, I think so. Depending on where I am, um, Mm -hmm. especially like, like code switching between if I'm with like the majority of white people or black people, then yeah, I definitely do switch between how I act or how I present myself or even just like sometimes even the way that I talk. So, yeah. um, And for me, like I grew up, uh, even though I moved around a lot throughout my childhood, um, I lived in, I think I always forget how many, but like six different states, but I was always one or two of the black people that were in my school. And so, um, so it was always, and one of them was usually my sister. So um, the other person. Jesus. So, <laughs> so, uh, you so made it sound like it was someone else. No, oh God. Usually my sister. Uh, so um, it's always been interesting, just even like with family members too, uh, mm-hmm. just switching in between even the way that I act or talk. So, mm-hmm. do you find that exhausting? It's easy. Like, it's not even something I think about. It just happens. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Just between us.